beautiful. But we don't want to clap and cheer for those bad guys over there. What happens when they do something wicked?
has a lot of awake, except for the queen and the beautiful Kuwait baby. And uh, that's when the Spriggans, they came forward. They snuck and they sneaked, they crept and they creeped all the way up into the palace garden. They stopped right there behind the king's bushes.
kids gather round. Lavina, you're finally old enough to understand politics. Come on over here. I can tell you my plan now. All right, Lavina. So, this is what you're going to do. You're going to sneak back into the palace. You're going to steal the king's great big orange key. And then, at midnight, you are to come out, unlock the palace gates. The Spriggans and I, we're going to rush forward. And we're going to take over the palace. And you'll take over the, the, the throne. All the Spriggans raise their swords in the air. And let out a wicked cheer. All right, Lavina, go get that key. And then the Spriggans rush back to their dungeons to sharpen their swords. Lavina rushed back to the palace. But those Spriggans have left something very important. Those poor little animals lying there alone in the forest. Luckily, the Gypsy Princess was coming through the forest that day.
luckily my friends Liz Briggins and I, we were here to save you. The king said, why daughter, that's the nicest thing you've done for me in 16 years. Perhaps there's hope for you yet. Oh, that was on the gypsy princess. She jumped up. She ran forward, threw her kill boss down on the ground. <laughs> and cried out, that's not true, your majesty. For you see, it was these wicked springers who were trying to take over your palace. And the gypsies and I were here to save you. The king did not know whom to believe. He looked at Ludvina and back to the gypsy princess. Ludvina, gypsy princess, Ludvina, gypsy princess. Back and forth until it looked like he had two heads spinning. Finally, his eyes rested upon the gypsy princess. Sixteen long years of illness had clouded his judgment. He frowned and he said, Young lady, do you know what a lie to the king is considered? It is considered treason. And there's only one punishment for treason. The king raised his scepter to the air, opened his mouth wide, and was about to pronounce the death sentence upon the gypsy princess. But before he could utter those fatal words, the palace gates burst open and the unicorn came charging through. She said, the way you pass judgment, think twice. She touched him once on his head and once on his heart. She said, let there first be a test. One of these two ladies can heal you, and whichever one can heal you is your true daughter and rightful heir to your throne. And with that, the unicorn vanished. The king looked down at the ladies and he said, Well, let's have this test. Ludvina, you first. Come forward and, and try to heal me. Ludvina came forward, touched the king on his shoulder. But instead of feeling better, the king felt much worse. His knees buckled. He fell to his back, gasping for breath. Little and twitching a little. Ludvina was so embarrassed, she ran and hid behind this brigands. Gypsy princess came forward. She placed her hand on the king's heart. Golden light emanated from her fingertips. The king instantly began to feel better. He jumped to his feet. He swam round in a great big circle and cried out, Bajo, a summer star built in 16 years! And there before him stood the gypsy Placed it onto the head of the gypsy princess, handed him his scepter, and turned to the rest of his kingdom. He cried out, Behold, my true daughter, and rightful heir to my throne. Everyone in the palace jumped up and cheered. Oh, but those of course, they looked at each other and said, Wait a minute, we're the bad guys. Started running back to their palace, to the gut dungeon. But before they could get anywhere, the knights rushed forward. They held up their swords and cried out, Halt, Spriggins! You're under arrest! By orders of the king. The gypsy princess rushed forward and said, Wait, knights! Instead of putting these Spriggins to death, I have a better idea. We shall put them to work. She pursed her lips and let out a whistle. All the animals rushed forward. Did you call us Gypsy Princess? The Gypsy Princess said, Why, yes, animals. For you see, for years these Spriggans have treated you with cruelty, uh, haunted your friends to nearly to extinction. They have ruined your food. From now on, they are to be your caretakers. They are to feed you three square meals a day and scratch you behind your ears whenever is necessary. Starting right now! All the Spriggans rushed forward and started scratching those little animals behind their ears. But those Spriggans had never tried to do anything nice before. They started to feel different. They reached behind them and started swirling their tails around in great big circles. But instead of everyone in the palace feeling hypnotized, they all began to feel warm inside as well. They all raised their hands high above their heads, started snapping their fingers, all clapping their hands, and spinning around in great big circles, doing the gypsy dance. Not even the Spriggans joined in. They were all dancing around in great big circles. They danced like this for days.